uh, students don't need to, don't need you to be perfect teachers right now. They need to be uh, honest and uh, it's like a human. Oops, I guess I have uh, taken the wrong slide. I'll just change the, just give me a second. So to give statistics, we have almost, uh, so uh, why we have disabled everyone, uh, your audio, video and other things is to make sure that we will be able to, you know, help you out with uh, questions and uh, we'll also help you out by questions in the way so that we can easily answer you over the one second. I'm just trying to make my other computer. I hope you are able to see my screen now. So, so today we are in reference management tool for research articles and thesis writing. Uh, and we have done a lot of such workshops before and we'll be doing further. And uh, let's know about few things today. So today's workshop, we are planning to learn uh, something known as Mendeley. Uh, what is Mendeley? Mendeley is a tool by Elsevier and it's a free tool for all of you to download to uh, use that tool for your research purpose or for your writing your thesis, writing your research papers. And you can also use for your references and other things. So please make sure that you use this uh, Mendeley if you are making, uh, uh, if you are using this Mendeley for uh, references. Uh, why I chose Mendeley? There are many other softwares, uh, Zotero and uh, EndNote, and I'll show you some of the list. Why we are interested in this software is because this is more of uh, easy for us to use because I'll show you the live demo. Uh, we'll learn about what is Mendeley and how can you build your profile on Mendeley. Mendeley is not just reference management. I'll tell you what reference management is and uh, uh, how can you insert citations? How can you generate bibliographies? And how can you share references using groups and other things? So uh, let us understand what is uh, Mendeley. Uh, before that, we have many such softwares, as I told. Uh, there is Mendeley, there is EndNote, which is very famous, and there is RefWorks, there is Zotero and uh, there is uh, papers. But if you see Mendeley is free, but you can you get only space of one GB. I guess it is enough for our researchers to have only one GB of uh, uh, space. And you have uh, RefWorks, you have Zotero, you have papers. And there is also paper pipe. I'll tell you where you can use paper pipe. But uh, Mendeley has a lot of advantages when compared to other uh, reference software. And please note this list is very uh, small list what I've given, only five of them, but there is a lot of others, one like uh, uh, maybe all these things. But these softwares, you need not worry about it. Main thing you should worry about is Mendeley. And you need not pay anything, it's completely free because uh, it's, uh, it's free for one GB. I guess it's more than enough for you to get that and it, it is used for not only this but you can also use for anything. So I have just made these slides but uh, I'm not interested for you to look at these slides. I'll show you the live demo so that uh, you can use it uh, very easily. So Mendeley was started by Elsevier with the support of many researchers and co co colleges, universities uh, globally and they came up with this software. Um, so uh, let's skip the slides and directly deep dive into the session of hands-on. So I'll share my screen now so that uh, Uh, now you can see that uh, where do you download Mendeley software? So I'll just go to Google.
so here i will just go and type download mendeley and you get download mendeley's desktop that's the first option what you got and you have to just click that you will get the version so i usually use macbook so in the macbook uh, uh, i can install but uh, i usually uh, don't use mendeley though it's powerful but it's more uh, other powerful software is ednot but ednot is paid version so i don't want to teach that but uh, we have uh, mendeley which is a uh, free version so that's what i wanted to show to you guys and uh, we have if you see this it is also available for mac that is your ios system and also for linux so if you are and all the procedures everything is same so you need not worry that uh, uh, we have only mac or we have only uh, linux so the procedure will be different so it's same for your windows same for your linux and same for mac so this is really interesting i'll come back to this website later i have, uh, you have to just click here and it will download I've already downloaded it for you. But before that, let's understand what is uh, Reference Manager. So let's go to uh, scholar.google.com where you get a lot of papers. Uh, it's a search engine. If you have attended my previous webinar, I would have mentioned about this. So if you go here and you just uh, enter that, uh, maybe I'll enter saying uh, you want papers on machine learning. So you have this paper on machine learning, and then uh, I'll open some random papers. So I'm just opening some random papers. This is one of the paper. And then let me open another paper. One from Springer. So this is patent. This is one of the paper which you can see that is open source machine learning R meets Veka. So this is one of the paper. Now I want to know what references is. So if you just scroll down at the end of it, you see I'll just go at the end. Yeah. So what you see here bottom are called as references. So this are nothing but uh, the references which you have referred. It can be article, it can be websites, it can be another uh, book chapter, or it can be anything, those things we call it as references. But it's not just you write references. So here you have 2007 uh, name of the author, what is the paper title and what is the journal name and so on and so forth. But these references uh, have to be cited in your paper. So how do you do that? You just go up, you see, this is already cited. What you are seeing, Ansler et al. It is cited, which means that if you, uh, this is a citation, you write it. But uh, many of you, I understand that you are engineers. So what you do is instead of going to IEEE, uh, instead of going to Google Scholar, you may directly go to IEEE Explore. Now in this IEEE Explore, yeah, so it's opening and uh, if you see, there are many, almost 500, okay, 51 lakhs. So 51 lakhs plus uh, articles you have, but these are articles I want to access via the articles. So what I'll say is I'll go to here and say machine learning and uh, download some of the articles or view some of the articles. So why I'm showing in different platforms, I'll let you know. And uh, I want only the one which is uh, subscribed to me or my college where I'm working. EMS College has access to this. So I'll take only the one which I can access. So the first paper is ITP transaction and pattern analysis, ITP transaction in biomedical circuits and systems. So if I go to this, I'm able to see the paper. And again, I want to see the references here. So how will I see my reference? I'll just zoom it. So I'll go end of my paper. Yeah. So if you see here, you have references. Uh, let the screen pop up, yes. So on the left side, what you can see is references. It has uh, name of the author and uh, 
all this and then it has volume, page number, year. Then again, you have same thing. There are around 23 references. But if you see, uh, if you just scroll little up, you will see somewhere is 23 and somewhere is uh, 14 and then there is 20, 22 and so on and so forth. So when you write a reference, it should always be in the order what your journal says. Or when you're writing your PhD thesis, they would have already said that this is the way you should write your references. Usually IEEE follows the way you cite the paper, which means that why is it here? If you see, I'll just go to the first page where references are started. So here, you remember, you won't have any references in abstract. So you're not supposed to write many of them. They discourage you writing the abstracts, including your conference papers or your journal papers. So here you see first paper. This is second paper. Yeah, so let me scroll down. Yeah, now you can see first paper, second paper, third paper. Then bottom of it, you can see fourth one and then so on and so forth. So what is this one, two, three, four is the references which you put at the end. So let's scroll down to the paper at the bottom and then go till, let's go till the end. So the one which I showed you one, two, three is nothing but the papers which is here. What you can see here, O, Boss, Quit, and B, Skull, and J, Schwann, all these are your references, which is first, second, and third, what was written on the top of the paper. But let's go back to a previous paper, which we had seen, I guess this one. But here they've written author name 2005, author et al. 2005. Again, if you go see uh, some other, maybe here, where they have uh, Elson, Gentry et al. 2007, 2003, and all those things. What are these? If you go down again, these are the references which they have referred in the paper. Now I showed you two versions of paper. One paper which is from Springer, another one is from IEEE. So if you two see both of them, both of them use different kind of reference styling. That is this one. This are reference man. That's why we call it as reference management. If it's all of them globally use the same kind of uh, references, then there is no problem. But each journal and each sometimes within the publisher, each journal also, they have different kinds of references. So it's very important for us to understand what kind of referencing we should do. So uh, let's go to uh, now hands-on session. You know, remember at the starting of the session, we downloaded the software. Software installation is super easy. It's like any other software. And uh, you can just download Mendeley. Now, why I'm telling Mendeley, as I said, it's free and uh, you have almost all the features which you, a typical researcher required. I personally use EndNote because from my university where I'm just faculty, I have complete access for EndNote, uh, which is a licensed version, but many of us, we may not have the access to licensed version. So we can use Mendeley, which is also equally powerful. So what you have to first do is, as soon as you download, you will get this page if you run that. And then I'll go and register. First thing what I have to do is, I have to go and register. It will take you to the browser. I already have an account in Mendeley, but I'll use some different account. So I'll say, so I'll use this and say continue. And then it will ask for password. I will give some random password and then I'll click on sign in. But uh, yes, so I've got my ready. So it's so easy for you to start a Mendeley, uh, you know, it's you can already do it. And automatically it will start asking if this is your paper. See, I had one paper from uh, my uh, previous year or something. Then I can say, yeah, it's me and you can do it. And you can also connect your IDs like your Scopus. Uh, if you have some ORCID ID or you have anything, you can just connect from here. We won't do that as of now. And uh, more importantly, let's go to uh, here if you can see. We can click here and then 
uh, you can go to download and download this Mendy desktop. But let us understand if we have, uh, I want to make sure that all my profile, I'll just click on my name. It will tell my profile and here I can edit all these things. I can put a nice photo and then add your position, institution, how my profile looks uh, and you can also uh, connect your ORCID ID. As I said, you can connect your Scopus ID. If you have personal website, you can just put it and then uh, do all the things. So once you connect your ORCID ID or Scopus ID, if you have already accumulated all your papers in one part, you can easily connect that and put it here also. You can see what's your impact and what's your publication and other things. Because I'm using a different email ID, oh, it has already found out some of the papers of mine. So it is showing this is my H index and other things and so on. So, so you can add all these things, make sure it is updated. And I'll also show you some of the features a little later, which is on the top. But main importantly, today we have gathered here to understand what is reference writing. By the way, we have reached 1,030 participants. Now, uh, I'll go back to my desktop and then sign in with the email ID and password which I have given. And you can also uh, click on stay sign in if you want and then click on sign in. I hope the password is correct. Yeah, it's connected. Now, uh, where did it go is I have to search, it will pop up, yeah. So as soon as you install, there'll be two things which will come up. One is uh, this reference manager, it's already installed to uh, import the document and there is something like a citation plugin for microword. It is not installed. So you just go and click here to install and it will automatically get installed, it's so easy. Previously, the things were a little tough, but now they have made it very super friendly and uh, you will close this. I'll tell you what is that citation plugin. So first thing is, uh, you have a lot of things how you can import your document. Uh, I will show you some of the demos so that you understand how you can import your document. You can import in any other files, like for example, I am using EndNote, now my subscription is over then I can go here and then do it. So you can go click on end, uh, all these things you can download. I'll also show you how are the other ways of importing or you can import using web plugin. I'll also show you how you can import using web plugin. I'll, there are a few things. For example, if you want to, where you want to store all these documents, if you have downloaded is what you will click here and then do the changes. This is where you will uh, be uh, having backup. You'll have some, publications which you have to share with your guide, your students, or it can be a publication which you want to use it only for yourself, even that is also possible. Um, this is also one of the button, help button if you want to do, I'll let you know. And by the way, if you don't have MS Word, I'm sure Microsoft Word is there with everyone. But many of you would like to use LibreOffice, which is free version of Microsoft Word from some other company, which is exactly same like Microsoft but it's open source or the free version. So it is also compatible with that. And if you ask me, is it compatible with Google Doc? Because many of you are using Google Doc nowadays. I would say no, but uh, there is another software which I'll show you end of the session if time permits. Okay, so let's, that was little bit tips. Now let's come to actual thing, how you will actually do it. Now on the left side, what you can see is uh, nothing but your work, work directory kind of thing. So it's one of the portal where you will use, uh, you'll have all your documents here and you can create groups, create folders and all those things. And the left side here are the filters which you can use. Uh, say if you want to check only my papers then you can filter by authors. Or if you have put some notes, I'll show you how to put that also, it's possible. And uh, the one which is in the between is for your papers. So how can you add papers? I'll show you multiple ways of adding papers. I've also downloaded a few papers for you before the session started. And this is about the paper which I've highlighted. So I guess it's better we add some papers and then discuss about the power of this tool. So first thing is I'll add papers. There are different ways I told. You can add files, add folders, watch folder. What is watch folder? I'll tell you. And add entry manually. All these possibilities are there. One easier way which I found out is uh, I have all my papers downloaded in my downloads. 
So I'll go to download. And uh, this is where okay. this is where is my download session on the right. What you can see on the left side is Mendeley. Now what I want to do it here is I go to download and all the PDFs what are I have, I'll take them. Sorry for that copy thing, but I'll take this and drag and drop in my Mendeley workspace. See here, what I did, I just took a paper or multiple papers, I dragged and dropped in in my Mendeley. Okay, so let me put all the papers so that uh, we have more papers. Oh, it's getting copied. I'm using a new system, I'm not used to this system, that's why there is little operating issues because I wanted to show, uh, I don't want to use my system because it already has a Mendeley in it. One caution I would like to give is uh, please do not use uh, multiple softwares. Why is that? Because if you use multiple softwares, it will so happen uh, like you use Mendeley and EndNote and Zotero. Then your library gets messed up and you will not really understand what you are trying to do and many of the features will disable because uh, some of the inside environments of the computer would have been changed. So make sure you don't use uh, multiple uh, softwares. If you are having access to EndNote, I recommend to use EndNote. It's also similar to that. But if not, if you don't have access, go to Mendeley and use it. Now, now see all these papers, though have copied the same paper time and again, you see it's not duplicated. So that's one more thing. Which you can see. Also, you can go to some of the settings and change the duplication, search for duplicates. And wonderful thing about this Mendeley is it will automatically extract all the metadata into the folder. I'll show you what metadata means. See here on the uh, so first paper I've selected, I've just highlighted it. Okay, I've just highlighted the first paper. I can go down, I can go up and other things. So first paper once I have highlighted. On the right side, you can see this is the title of paper. This is the email, I mean, uh, the author's name. This is journal name. This is the year. If volume issue is there, it will extract. If pages are there, it will extract. Abstract also, it will extract. Sometimes it so happens there might be some mistake in the abstract or something, but I'll tell you how you can fix that also very easily. Who is the publisher? You remember we downloaded some papers or we viewed some papers. I've also downloaded it before. And URLs, if it is a DOI, digital identifier, ISBN number, PubMed ID, if it is there. And if you already have PDF, that is also there. Let's go to the second paper. Something on China, one COVID-19 I downloaded. So that is also there. Everything is already accumulated here. And I go to the other one, it's there. So all papers have this. In case you see that you have some suspicion about this paper, you can right click and say update details. It will automatically connect this thing to the internet and see if there is any missing data and it will fill it. This is one way of adding your paper. Another way of adding your paper is add files and then go to your folder wherever you have paper and then just click on that and say open. I press cancel because the paper is already there. So once you say open, you can add that. Also. So one way is to drag and drop from one folder to this Mendeley desktop, or second way is you can add by files. There is another fold, uh, you know, folder known as watch folder. What is this watch folder is? I will create one uh, folder inside desktop. Let me create one. So I'll go to desktop. I'll create uh, one new folder. I'll call as watch folder. You can call it anything you want. It's not necessary, it should be watch folder. I'll, I didn't rename it, so I'll say watch folder Mendeley. So once I put this watch folder inside that, now it is empty. What will happen is when I say I have to click on watch folder and then where did I save that? In my desktop, right? So I'll go to my desktop. 
in that i click on this watch folder and say apply and okay what is this watch folder so any time you download and put that in this folder i'll go to watch folder and maybe i'll copy one of the documents from my downloads i'll copy this so right click and copy and then i'll go to my desktop watch folder which i just created and then paste it here so what is the beauty of this watch folder is as soon as i add any article in the watch folder after a few seconds it will automatically go and synchronize with your uh, mendeley desktop watch this is good right you every time you need not import it and then put it using your drag and drop strategy or you need not import it using add file strategy so those are the three important things uh, which you can use it in different way but i'll show you another way is adding entry manual what type it is you can select and on the top you can go and select what type of article whether it is uh, a bill book book section case study computer program conference proceedings many of the iit conference proceedings you want to do is a general article magazine patent everything you can put it because each one has different kinds of format and once you put that you can put the title of the paper you can put author's name journal year volume issue you can put your pages abstract tags authors keywords url and so on so forth okay all this in as soon as you put and add that paper it will automatically come now few of you will ask i don't have uh, uh, you know full paper with me so what should i do so if you don't have full paper don't worry you just you can just drag and drop the reference also i'll show you how later so this is the first thing which you should learn now understood uh, first thing i told you is there are different windows here one is this window second window third window and fourth window first window is about your documents where what is those documents all those things second window is filter on the left and third window is the middle one which is uh, for all your papers which you have uh, accum accumulated here and right side is the details about those paper okay so these are some of the uh, uh, features of this mendeley now this is good now i have all these things in one place so it's easy for me to search all papers at one place but this is not reference management you are just putting everything in one place and in one tool and you are trying to play with it one amazing thing is if you have already pdf downloaded in this you can just double click on that and pdf opens in the same browser it won't open in your pdf uh, you know adobe adobe or uh, any other internet explorer or any other things so instead of that you can directly click here and it will open but only thing is you know drag and drop you should have done or you should have allowed it to access the paper from the uh, wherever the source is. if it is freely downloadable you can use it i'll tell you one more thing is i have papers here on two different things for example we took on machine learning second thing is we took something on covid i showed you some papers so i can create folders here uh, first folder i'll create is covid 19 data second folder i'll create is machine learning because all of us are researchers you may be so i used to do this for each of my phd when i was doing my phd i used to make different different folders first chapter second chapter i used to give the title of chapter and i not only phd i used to do other stuffs also during my phd related to research so i used to put all those in different different uh, folders so that it's easier for me to manage now what you have to do is again you can go back to all documents now this is related to covid i'll just drag it and drop it in my uh, covid 19 session okay so if you go to covid 19 this is already added now again i'll go to all documents this is what it is intensive care unit characterization something something i don't this is not this is uh, not related to either machine learning or covid 19 so i'll create another folder random or i can name anything i want so so i'll write as random and then i'll go here and then uh, second paper i'll put it and random and third one is again machine learning so i'll just put it in machine learning fourth one is also machine learning so i'll put in machine learning fifth is also machine learning machine learning this machine learning for example this paper is both covid as well as machine learning 
So what you can do is you can put in machine learning as well as you can also drag the same thing in COVID-19. And then there is this last one, I don't know, it is not machine learning, neither, uh, you know, any of the, uh, then I'll put this in random. So all the papers are sorted. Now, if you go to unsorted, there is only one paper which we didn't do it. Probably it didn't go it. So I'll take that also and put it in random or something. So once it is, everything is sorted, you don't have that unsorted thing also, yet, which means that all of them are in their respective folders. Recently added, you get whatever recently added. Recently read, because I opened that PDF, I got this too. And if there is some favorite publication, for me, favorite is I used to follow one in my research field, what I did my PhD on. There were only two papers which I used to refer time and again, because that was the only two papers which was published in the domain which I did my PhD. After that, it's all my papers which was published. So I used to mark them as favorite. Another favorite can be uh, something which is uh, published by me itself. So I want to refer my own paper time and again. If somebody asks, my colleague asks, my guide asks, then I'll go and put it there. Next is my publication also you can put. You can just drag and drop your papers directly here and it will go and sit here. Fine. So uh, these are a few things. Next is if you have deleted anything, you'll have it here and so on. So forth. Now let's go to all documents. So how do you mark this as your favorite document? You just go like your email. If you remember, you just put a star, then it will go and fall into your favorite folder. So you go, I've already clicked this as my favorite. If you go to favorite, automatically it goes. I don't want this as favorite. I used to like at that time. Now this is no more favorite. You remove the star, it will go off. This is one thing. Next thing I want to understand is, now this machine learning in medicine is there. I want to add some tags. What is tags? I'll tell you how this will come handy. So this is a tag for my first chapter of my introduction chapter or introduction or I'll write paper one. I'll also put one more um, tag saying machine learning. So all this can be your tags. So once you have, oh, okay. so you have already put all these three tags, introduction, paper one, machine learning. And I'll take another one also. This one also I'll give machine learning as tag. This one also I'll give machine learning as tag. Perfect. Now I have three papers in machine learning in front of you. I've done that. So if you see here, first one, second one, and third one. So all three are tagged with uh, machine learning. So once I have this machine learning, then what I can do is, this tags are nothing but it's easier for you to search because your first chapter sometimes you would have uh, put in even in buckets, but multiple times you may have to use. Then I'll go here, filter by my tags. You click here, you want only the one in machine learning. So you remember I took three papers in machine learning, all three are available here. But introduction, only one paper was there. Paper one also, if you see only one. All of them with tags also, all of them are there like this. Next, I can do by filter by author keywords. So some of the keywords are here, which is commonly used in all these things. If you go here, see here, author keywords. What are author keywords? Whenever you write your paper, you would have written your keywords, right? That are author keywords. So here, active learning, computers, deep learning, and all those keywords. If you see here, these are the keywords which can give. Next is I want to filter by authors. How does this happen? It's in alphabetical order. So if Abhishek, Abhishek will come first. And if Leo, it will come at the L. So it's always sorted in alphabetical order. You want to know what are the publications done by maybe uh, someone in the field. Uh, and you already have all of them in your repository of your Mendeley. So that can be done. So once you have done, these are few of the features which I also regularly use. Filter by publication also you can see. What is filter by publication? Where is it published? Is it published in uh, IEEE or is it published in particular journal or JAMA or molecules, proceedings, and so on? So forth. you'll get this. Is very few examples I've taken around five to six papers, but once you start building it, you'll have hundreds of papers. This will be very powerful and handy too. After this, for example, you're doing your literature survey and your guide has told make sure that you complete all your literature survey once a day. And I want summary of all your literature survey. At that time, what will come in handy? 
Andy is this go to notes, write your notes. So this is for my first paper. I'm writing notes. This is based on one China paper and it's by it's uh, published in JAMA and you want to know it gives association of cardiac injury. So something like that, you can make some notes and uh, you can save it. You can do some underlining if you want. You can do bold if you want. You can do italics if you want and so on. So forth. And uh, this contents, if you want within the paper, you can go to that content also. Or you want to read the paper and make notes, open the paper and uh, scroll down. Okay, this is what I want to copy. You just copy and paste it in your general notes. It, it, it get pasted there as well. Okay, so these are different ways how you can use notes. Now, uh, there are a few more things which you can use within the Mendeley whenever you open a PDF is on the top, you can see pan. Pan is just to this one is select. Select will help you to select the text. And uh, you can also put some comment, highlight, and uh, you know, copy this and then highlight this text, which you can use it right here. Or you can give some notes also for this. So I want to make a notes here. Um, this is the paper by Obo about Wuhan, China, published during lockdown in 2020. Something like that, you can keep the notes. And when I you click this, you'll be able to see the notes. Oh, I, I guess not this paper. I can also click here and delete it. You know, delete this. That's also possible. Next is you have zoom in, zoom out feature, full screen, sync feature. I'll come to what sync feature is. So these are a few of the features which you can use. Fine. So uh, now what we'll do is we'll go back to library. Let me close this video. Now you are telling, sir, I want to use this in my paper because you told reference management. These are few things which will help you during writing your thesis or during when you write your paper. Now we'll go to few things. These are few of the settings. It's very self-explanatory. You can just go and check later. But now let me go to a Word document. And I'll open maybe some template for because I'm lazy to type. So let me open some template uh, which is here. And as soon as I open my template, this is some method. I don't want that. So assume that this is one of your paper which you have written. Okay. So I'll make this little more bigger I mean, so that you can see it better. Or what I can do is I can just uh, take some thing from here. Some say this is my paper. I'll just copy it from here. This is only for demo. Copy and copying and pasting is plagiarism. So let's not do that. I'll discuss about plagiarism end of my session. Yeah. So if you see, this is something. Uh, let's assume I have written this. Okay, so this is the paper, for example, some of the things I've written and I have some references here, I'll delete it also. Now, I want to add some references for this. Now, what I have to do is I have to go to reference and there is a new thing which is here on the top, which you can see. If you go to your Word document, if you have not uh, added Mendeley, then this won't be visible. You'll have one, all these things, but you won't have this Mendeley. So what I'll do is, this is my paper. So I started with, uh, you know, maybe introduction. So this is my introduction part. And uh, then next I'll go to methodology. And then you have results, then you have discussion. And last thing you have is references. Remember I showed you in the paper. Now, for this, I want to add some references. So, assume that I have some two paras in the introduction. 
this is very random introduction I've taken. What I'll do is just zoom it. Yeah. So what I'll do is I want to add reference here. So uh, one of the references I'll add is I have to go and say insert citation. Okay, because I have to add a citation here. For example, let me go to one of the paper which we referred is here. So if you see here in this paper, let me scroll up. You can see 13 here, right? So this 13th one is the reference we want to add, for example. And here you see 21 is the reference. Similarly, we have 26 references in this paper. And here also, not this, this is patent, but we'll go here. Here also you have some references, which was already Hashler et al and other things. You want to add this in your paper. So how can you add that? I'll just go at this point, which place you want to add is what you have to keep your cursor. I want to add off the point and then go insert citation and I can search by author or search by anything I want. So I'll just, as soon as you click a letter, it will show all the, uh, papers which is there in your Mendeley, not from internet or something. It will show only from your Mendeley library. I'll just click on this and then say OK. It will say formatting citation. So already it has formatted. I've taken first paper. Now after this, I want to put one more paper. I'll change my cursor here and then click on insert citation. And then I'll uh, add one more paper. Say this is my association of cardiac injuries, so on and so forth, of one paper. So I'll just click on this and then say, okay, it will add second paper. And then I want one more paper here. I'll just click here. You can search by whatever you want. I'll just show you again. Sorry. I want a paper here, right? after labels. So I'll click there, click on insert citation, and then I can search by author, I can search by title, I can search by year, I can put my keywords, notes, tags, whatever you have put already, all those things. And then, uh, yeah, so this is the paper I wanted to add, and then I'll say, okay. Yes, done. It's already added. The last paper I want to add is at the end, maybe here after the sets. I click here and say here, and then click here, and then OK. So I've added all the papers now. My references are done for introduction. Now, after this, I want to add all the libraries, I mean, now, now methodology, discussion, all those things you've already seen. Now, add the references, I want to add them. So let me put all these things in one line so that uh, you'll be able to see the references. Now here in the references, I want to add all the bibliography or I want to add all the references. What is this bibliography I'm talking about? If you go to your IT paper, which I showed, which was somewhere here. Yeah. yeah, for example, let's take this paper. I'll just scroll down at the end. Zoom it a little bit, a little bit more. So if you see here, you have references on the right side, you can see references. And then at the bottom, you can see uh, some of the references. So there are many If you want in this form. Initially, what you were doing, you were typing all of them in your keyboard and then in this format, because IEEE says you have to use this format. But if you go to some other journal, then they will say you have to use some other format. For example, if you go to the previous one more journal, which I showed, they tell you use some other different format. How can I generalize all these things is what I'll check. So you go back to your Word document, then I want to insert this bibliography. You will see the magic which will happen here. I'll just click on insert bibliography. Right? See, all of them have come. This color is because of the document. See here, automatically the references have already accumulated in the format, whatever you want. Now you will say, no, sir, I wanted to submit it to uh, my uh, IEEE conference. So I want an IEEE format. By default, as soon as you install, you'll get APA format. APA 7 is the latest one, APA 6 and now APA 7. So APA 7 format. 
No, I want in IEEE format. So what you go is just go to the style here and then open the go to the style, open the small box, drop down box, and then go and click on IEEE. As soon as you click on IEEE, see the magic. Automatically it will form everything in the IEEE format. And here also you see it is automatically changing not only on the references but also in IEEE format. I don't want in API, I don't want in IEEE, I want in nature format. So I'll go here, click on nature format, automatically it will change. See here, even this one, two, three got changed, even the bottom one also got changed. No, I'm okay with the API uh, 7 or I want some AMA, American Medical Association, I want this. I click that, automatically it gets changed. No, I'm okay with API, go back and uh, change this, automatically everything gets changed. This is the power of maintenance. I'm sure this is what is the main core of this workshop. How will you do? So why do you need to change this references time and again? It's because you submit your journal. They say no, it's rejected. You go to another journal, then you have put 50 references each one. You have to change it. You finish your thesis. You give it to your guide. Your guide says no, this is not okay. Put this reference here. Put this reference here. All those things. That also you can manage. So for example, your guide will come and say there is one reference which is missing here. So active learning after that i want one more reference and you say oh i didn't insert so if you're doing manually you have to go here add that especially if you're doing this IEEE format let me go to that so uh, whenever you go here and then uh, say here yeah, learning you want to add IEEE format you see one two is here three is here and the last one four is after the training set now i want to insert a uh, point here insert citation and then I have forgotten I'll insert one more citation somewhere here so maybe this one and then I'll click ok so it will automatically become four and this will become five even the bottom one also it will automatically change this is good right if you are really working hard for your thesis and you don't want to spend on this uh, clerical job I would say Better you spend on your research quality of writing rather than this clerical job. So this is the power of Mendeley. And you want to export it, you can do that. Compatible with LibreOffice or Mendeley fields. And uh, uh, you can do all other things and so on and so forth. Now there is another one which I want to tell you is in case you want to add, you don't find anything here. You can go to more styles. Click on the journal which you want to uh, IEEE is all over same, but you have some uh, American, sorry, so American, you have something, then go here and then click on that and use this style automatically to take. In case you don't find this also, you can go to get more style. Then here you have thousands and thousands of uh, references. If you're submitting to big journal uh, in peer review, only the proper peer review journal, predatory journals, it won't support. So don't ask me for some nonsense journals, which we are not supposed to refer. So I want some journal of management, European Journal of Management. And say install, it gets installed, and you can use that, go here, and then uh, you just put management here, automatically it would have got installed. And then say, use this style, and done. So automatically it's using the style of whatever we have put. Done. So now we'll see this next one is uh, in case sometimes you're not able to see the changes, you can just say refresh. It will automatically make everything uh, visible. Now, a uh, few more things I want to show you before we close down is synchronization your library. What is the sync libraries? We'll go back to our Mendeley desktop, I mean, uh, you know, online version. So what I'll do is I'll go and sign in. <laughs> Once I sign in, I'll go to this page and I want to see my library. My library is empty, but I'm already loaded there. Sometimes it won't work. So what you're supposed to do is go and click on sync. As soon as you click on sync, it will go, go to the server, sync, and then it will say how many documents are added here. It's telling adding documents, synchronization, 72% at the bottom, you can see. 
how much ever is done, it will also upload the documents, so that's why it will take time. So if you're not able to see here, you have to refresh your document, then you will see, see the magic, automatically it came. The one which I showed you a PDF is already uploaded on the cloud, the one which you are not on the PDF is not. So one good thing about Mendeley is, I use multiple computer, I have one, I have two offices, so I use two office, uh, two computers, I have uh, two laptops, I have my iPad, I have everything, I have my mobile phone I have to use, so everything you can sync together very easily. So that's possible because you can install all of them, use the same username and uh, everything, it's easier. Somebody is asking that, that they are not able to see that in the part which is here. In case you are not able to see this, what you have to do is go back to your tool, go back to your Mendeley desktop, click on tools and say install MS Word plugin. Here you are getting uninstalled because I've already installed, right? So you can say uninstall and install MS Word plugin, it will automatically install. It will say, say I have to close the Word document if it is open, it will close and it will open. Now, uh, the last thing I want to show in the demo part is install web importer. What is this install web importer? Let's click on that and see. Install, okay. So I'll do one thing. Uh, I'll go to this and I'll just uh, Google here and say install web importer for Mendeley. So you will get this, click on the first page. So depending on which browser you are able to see, uh, if you are using your, uh, uh, for example, I'm using Chrome, which I'm more comfortable. Many of you use Mozilla Firefox, for that also it's there. And uh, you want to use for uh, maybe Safari, MacBook people, you can use that. It supports multiple browsers, even Internet Explorer, which many of us don't use. So how will you use that is you just go to this website and say available for Chrome or you can just go and uh, yeah, just click on available for Chrome. It will show this, go to click web importer for Chrome. It is one extension which you have to add in your browser. So once you say that add to Chrome, you click on this add to Chrome, add extension. You will see that whether it is compatible and then it will get automatically connected here. Then uh, one more thing is I want to, if you want to add this, how will you add that? I'll show you. So I want this paper. Let's take a new paper. Yeah, this paper, I want to add it in the, let's go to IEEE and then maybe this paper. I'll go to IEEE uh, website. Explorer website. I want to add this paper in my library, which I've already installed. So for that, what you have to do, you have to download the PDF, upload it, and so on, so forth. I don't want all those hassle. So what I can do is uh, click on this web importer on the top, and uh, it will say yes. You want to consent? You have to give the consent and uh, sign in. not working i'm not sure why click on this extension uses cookies okay you have to just say consent and then sign in this is really good tool somehow it's not working let me try in this yeah so i'll say sign in will open a new box for you. So meanwhile, somebody asked a question that, uh, what is the magic for getting maximum citation? Uh, there is no magic. You have to publish in very good journal, then you get very good citation. How to publish in very good journal? It's easy that you do very good research work. So let's uh, wait for the sign in to open. I'm not sure it's going in different window, I guess. Let me check. Not sure why it is getting managed. 
That's why I hate Windows. I don't but yeah, many of us use Windows, so let's not curse it. But yeah, it's very easy. As soon as you go, you just say sign in. In my MacBook, it shows directly here. Um, I'm not sure why it is not showing the, here. As soon as you say sign in, uh, you can just go and let's see if this option works. Can't sign in. Oh, it's NCQs. I don't want. So some cookies problem or site settings, you just go that and try to figure out. But you just put all the uh, details of your, it will just ask your username and password. You have to just click it and you'll get, you can just click on that and automatically it will go and sit in your library here. Whatever this, it will auto play and you have to just say sync, it will come directly. So these are the few things which I want to show on Mendeley. Before we close and take questions, I have uh, uh, one thing which are the other tools available for uh, Mendeley. One is known as data sets. Now, many of you mail me saying, I want to use a data set. I want to download some data sets. Can you help me out with that and so on and so forth? So this is something really good question many of you ask. One is I would say go to Google data, which is pretty new, data set search. It's called uh, Google data search dot research dot Google. And you want something on COVID-19, you get amazing set of data sets. Kaggle is another one for data set. Another one which I haven't used, but people say it's good, is uh, you, uh, you want, sure if they have updated with COVID-19. So this is also, you have to go to data and then search there, you'll get many of the data required. Okay, and here also what type of data you want, you just want data repositories, you want some slides, you want uh, anything, you will get it here in the data set. I'll put start so that everything will pop up. So what kind you want here, see here. You want only slides, you want audio, you want interactive resources, video, see the amazing number of slides. You want images, uh, tabular data, data sets, models, sequencing data, data repository, everything is available. Uh, if you remember my uh, funding workshop, which I've done how to write a successful grant funding. So this is also one of, <coughs> one of the portal which you can use. It's known as funding. Click on this funding, see the related opportunities. For engineering, we have 1,000 plus open funding, neuroscience, computer science, all those things, medicine, and other things. Only thing is, if you click on these things, it is not possible to get something for India many a times unless there is a foreign collaboration. But you will get to know at least what are the other funding. See, this is a European funding, Horizon 2020. There is other funding. So this is all Chinese funding and other things. So you can just go through, but it's very, uh, you can just uh, go and check what kind of funding you're looking at. And if you can just put your country of citizenship, say India are from India and is, am I still eligible? And it will give you only these fundings, only 242 fundings out of thousands, which are, which you are eligible. So this is one which I wanted to show. Career is again, you can use if you want. So these are the few options mainly is uh, there. Now let's go on to a uh, few of my closing remarks through my slides. Again, I have to shift my computer. Okay, so. Yes. So quickly, let's revise what we had discussed till now. The first one is, uh, yes, you can see my screen. Uh, yeah, so there are multiple. So now you've got to know what is reference management. It's about taking your uh, references and citations and formatting in the journal requirements or your thesis requirements. So next thing is based in, I told you what are these things, what all you can do. You can maintain the profile. I've showed you directly how you can do it. You can sync your library, which is in your Mendeley, as well as sync your library, which is in your uh, uh, desktop, and sync them all over all systems which you try to use. 
and you can also network with other researchers if you are looking for search for some group which is working on maybe machine learning you want to network with them you can do that uh, additional thing is uh, one ai algorithm with mendeley uses they'll try to see what kind of articles you have published and they try to push notifications to your email about what kind of uh, so also they will give you what kind of uh, uh, say for example i have published in neuroscience so i get emails about something exactly similar if somebody has published or previously they are published in my email box that's also a nice feature as i said you can do a lot of things set up a manage reference groups as i said and you can filter using author keywords tags tags and uh, library you can do it watch folder as i told uh, you can export it you can import some references if you want uh, that is something good i will see if i can show it and uh, this is import to mendy that uh, you know web importer which i showed So I guess these things, you can also search by the way, I forgot to tell that you want something, you just go here and then say search, it will search. You can write notes, uh, this is something how you will do. Yeah, so last thing is I want to give out some references for you guys. These are a few references, you can take screenshot of this. Resources, Mendeley, 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 data, funding, all those things. Or just Google Mendeley and you will get all the resources you want. So before we go, somebody wanted to know how we can manage. Uh, I'll share my entire screen one sec. So share. Share and share my screen. So I'll go to my, uh, you've seen my slides, but one thing I just wanted to go is my browser here. This was a jazz I was playing by the way. And uh, somebody said, can you explain us how we can use some kind of, yeah, this is what is the resources which I'll be sharing and I'll be updating it today. So I'll just paste in your chat window. If you want to refer that you can go and refer that and say i want to put some uh, you know references for this you can go here and paper pile is another one so paper pile i've already added it i use sometimes you just go here and say uh, paper pile this is also a nice easier one but i somehow don't like this because of uh, it's not that powerful as uh, this one. So you have to just put it here, paper pile. You want to just add this and say, click on site. You'll be able to uh, click it here. And what kind of format you want, you can do it, or you can go to more style and then type IEEE or something. All those things you can just say and save and update sites and where the feed will come from. Okay. This is nothing but known as paper pile. Add-ons, you have to just go and get add-ons, paper pile, you can check and then try to add this. Okay, this is another tool, very simple, very easy. If you're working with Google Docs, often like me, but still I prefer Mendeley because it's more powerful, it has more features and other things. This is also free version initial, it's a premium version, freemium. So if you want more powerful version, you have to pay, but Mendeley is sufficient for whatever is search we do. Uh, Another one I wanted to show was, I guess that's it. Uh, let's see, uh, these are a few references as I told. And uh, I will be sharing today's recording. I will be doing some editing and then sharing. Uh, yeah, somebody reminded me, thanks a lot. So you want my uh, some something about plagiarism. So let's understand what is plagiarism. I have two kinds of, uh, One of them which IEEE uses for their conferences is known as Authenticate. Authenticate is the one which you use. Authenticate. 
So I get this from my university where I'm a guest faculty. So I'll just uh, it's opening. I'll just log in. So what is plagiarism? Plagiarism is copying and pasting. So you see a lot of things I've done. For example, uh, I'll just show you. Uh, this tool is not free. It's really expensive version. From Oxford University, there is something known as a similarity uh, checker or something. Ox Oxford, people say this is free. You can just go to OXSIC.com. Best free plagiarism checker is what they say. I'm not sure if it is free. I haven't tried, but this is what people say. And you can just go and explore. If it is good, then get back to me in my next workshops. I'll promote this. Uh, they tell this is the one which uh, is there. But Turnitin is very famous in India and many of the universities abroad. And even my university or my college used Turnitin. There is another thing known as Authenticate, which where I am, I guess, faculty, master's university, I use that. So this is some random paper I had generated to show you what is plagiarism. So if you see whatever is highlighted here, the first one is nothing but a, the, some author has copy pasted entire one from this. Whereas he copy pasted, if you can see on the right, at this place he has gone. It will give you a link from where this guy has copy pasted and everything. And these are other percentage. It will give you a nice report, digital report like this, saying how much percentage you have copy pasted. So it is 68% plagiarism. So what is plagiarism? Copy pasting somebody's work and putting it as if your work and trying to publish. All journals, including conferences, have become very, very, including funding agencies, by the way, have become very cautious about plagiarism. Don't try to copy paste and then try to do uh, write a proposal, write your paper, all those things. That's not allowed. That's not ethically correct. How can you avoid it? You have to understand and write on your own. Give proper referencing. Uh, I showed you how to give references now. And another way to do that is uh, about, uh, you can do something like uh, understand that, write uh, all those things in your paper and then reiterate it. Uh, give proper credentials, all those things. Just writing in quotes and giving references, that can be done for definitions or other things, but not necessarily all of them will work for that uh, way. So this is a little bit of plagiarism. This is one. Authenticate is uh, other, uh, one of the software. Uh, another software which even uh, many of the universities in India they use is known as Turnitin. This I have access to my college, uh, BMSC, where I work. So Authenticate is another good tool which you can use. And uh, this also gives you a nice uh, one. So there is somebody's work. I don't want to show this. But uh, yeah, so this is how it works, OK? Uh, let's uh, now close this by giving some of the references I've told you. If you uh, are coming back to the recording, so I have recorded this session, I'll do some editions and I'll upload in the YouTube channel. And uh, you can just go through it if you are interested and I'll, I'll be happy to help you out to actually, you know, uh, if you have some questions and other things. So you can watch my YouTube channel, just go Abhishek Apaji YouTube, you will get this channel, which is uh, Abhishek. Channels. So the last time Coursera, I did the same thing for my students here in BMSC. You can just go and if you are interested, you can go and look at this Coursera uh, part. And uh, here is where I'll upload my uh, this thing. So you have to just say Abhishek Apaji YouTube channel. You will get this. So give me a day of time. I'll upload it and I'll share the link with all of you guys. You can just subscribe and uh, offer this so that in case if I do some future webinars and upload everything here, you can go and uh, try to, you know, learn a lot of things which I've done. Yeah, as usual, share, subscribe, and uh, do all those things. Now, uh, the last thing I wanted to show was uh, my, I have told, just type Abhishek Apaji in any social media, almost everywhere I'm there. 
and uh, let's take some of the questions uh, which is being uh, so So we'll go back to questions. If you have some questions, please go 